9. Peggy Sue Evers In 2013, a New Mexico woman named Peggy Sue Evers convinced 75-year-old Fayetteville, Arkansas resident Don Fulton that she was the famous country and bluegrass singer Alison Krauss. She told the senior citizen that she was living under the name Peggy Sue Evers because she was under the protection of the Witness Protection Program. And he bought it. To seal the deal, she sang some of the Grammy Award-winning artist's greatest hits, and it was evidently enough to convince Fulton that Evers was telling the truth. The pair married, and Evers moved to Arkansas to live her con out with the man she lied to. She then proceeded to drain Fulton of his life savings. She also convinced him to sign ownership of his $245,000 house over to her. But the law eventually caught up with Evers. She pleaded guilty to theft by deception and received an eight-year probation sentence. The phony starler was ordered to return Fulton's home and four cars and to pay restitution to the tune of $73,000. When she failed to return the cars, she was charged with violating probation and a court date was set. Evers was absent in court and was later caught staying at a motel in New Mexico under a fake name. She was extradited back to Arkansas, where a judge extended her probation to 15 years. 8. Mark Nye During a routine traffic stop near the English town of Guildford last year, police caught the driver, a man who called himself Connor, trying to dispose of two cell phones and some drugs. Inside the vehicle, police found a stack of business cards advertising a drug-selling business called McGregor Enterprise. Clearly, the man was playing on his slight resemblance to the famous Irish MMA fighter Conor McGregor. His real name is Mark Nye, and the officers found enough incriminating evidence in his car to secure a search warrant for his house. Inside the man's home, they found a large amount of boric acid, which is often used to cut drugs, according to a Facebook post by investigating officer PC McGill. Nye ultimately pleaded guilty to possession with intent to supply Class A drugs, which is the class of drugs that comes with the most severe consequences under British law. He was also convicted of driving without a license and without insurance, and received a three-year prison sentence. 7. Logan Malik Recently, in May 2022, a Washingtonville, Ohio police officer's career screeched to a halt after he was seen in nearby Boardman acting suspiciously at a local Sheets gas station and a Holiday Inn. Witnesses called the Boardman police to report that the man was claiming to be a federal law enforcement officer. But something about the way he was acting didn't feel right. The suspect, Logan Malik, told employees that he was a U.S. Marshal and that he was searching for skinheads. He asked the workers to contact him directly if they identified any, rather than dialing 911. Malik claimed that the U.S. Marshals had arrested five suspects already. Instead of providing an official business card or anything that would probably identify him as an officer of the law, he scribbled a phone number on a piece of paper and wrote U.S. Marshal Officer Malik and Northeast Ohio Violent Crimes Task Force. A witness told the real cops that Malik appeared to be carrying a fake gun and badge as well. When officers pulled him over, he was reportedly wearing a tactile vest, a gun holster, and his actual police job from his job as a Washingtonville cop. Malik claimed that he never claimed to be a U.S. Marshal, but that it was his dream to become one, and that he'd be making conversation about it at the places he'd visited that day. After working on the Washingtonville police force part-time for less than four months, Malik was let go from his job. He had previously been encouraged to resign from his position at another department due to performance issues. Malik pleaded not guilty to impersonating a police officer and is free on bond while the case plays out in court. 6. Dwayne Kuchai's Signs In September 2018, at a convenience store in Frederick, Maryland, a policeman crossed paths with a man wearing all black and a hat that said narcotics on the front. During a conversation with the man, who was later identified as 48-year-old Dwayne Kuchai's Signs, the officer noticed a hat that said police on it and a police-style badge on the man's truck. When the officer asked to see his law enforcement identification, Kochai Signs pulled out his wallet but failed to procure a valid police ID. The unconvinced cop searched the suspect in his vehicle and found a gun, a shotgun, ammunition, non-prescription oxycodone, and a green powdery substance. Signs was charged with having a handgun on his person, having a handgun in his vehicle, disorderly conduct, and making a false statement to a law enforcement officer. A judge ordered he be held without bail 
after he initially refused a public defender's services, causing his initial court date to be delayed twice in one week. He told the judge that he was confused because he arrived at the jail under the influence of drugs. Sign's public defender challenged several points in the police report and claimed that the defendant approached the cop at the gas station because he was interested in becoming a police officer. The lawyer argued that someone who was pretending to be a cop wouldn't just strike up a conversation with one and do so as eagerly as he supposedly did. But the criminal complaint alleged that Sines had depicted himself as a Baltimore police officer and cited the man's clothing as obvious evidence that he was trying to pass as a member of law enforcement. The judge seemed to agree, describing Sines' behavior as bizarre and frightening. It's unclear how the case played out. 5. Jesse Stover In one of the latest Florida Man stories to hit news headlines, police were recently called to a Wendy's restaurant in Flagler County, Florida over a disruptive customer. A 57-year-old man named Jesse Stover had allegedly gotten argumentative with employees at the fast food joint in Bunnell when they refused to give him the company's customary law enforcement discount. Workers told officers that Stover was a regular customer and that he'd regularly demanded the discount for two years. He had admitted to not being a cop, but claimed that he was an undercover DEA agent. The story clearly didn't fly with the restaurant's employees, and it didn't fly with the police either. They searched Stover and found the ID that he'd quickly flashed to try claiming the discount, only to refuse to let workers take a closer look. It was a concealed gun permit, which looks a lot like a law enforcement badge at a quick glance. Stover was charged with impersonating a police officer. 4. Nicholas Rudolph Deputies from the Stafford County Sheriff's Office in Virginia were recently called to a local marketplace one evening over complaints about an individual with a weapon. A crew had approached an SUV in a parking lot, but they had to do some work and asked the driver to move. The man behind the wheel allegedly flashed a badge and pointed a gun at one of the employees, who then called 911. When deputies tried approaching the SUV, the driver sped off. A high-speed chase ensued, leading the pursuit onto a busy interstate. Police tried to stop the vehicle using a rolling roadblock, but were unsuccessful. At one point, the driver flashed an FBI badge to officers as he drove by. He reached speeds of up to 88 miles per hour, 142 kilometers per hour, putting his own life and others in danger. Using what's known as a pit maneuver, a sergeant finally got the driver to stop, bringing the chase to an end. The suspect, 49-year-old Nicholas Rudolph, finally decided to be cooperative and was taken into custody without incident. He had a BB gun and various forms of fake FBI identification in his possession. Rudolph faces charges of impersonating a law enforcement officer, brandishing, obstructing, reckless driving, and eluding. He's being held without bond as the FBI investigates the incident. In a statement, the Stafford County Sheriff's Office said that this is not the first time Rudolph has been accused of pretending to be a member of law enforcement. Between three and four years ago, a local resident arrived home to find the suspect taking photos of their house. The person already knew Rudolph from a previous interaction, and he was also arrested in that incident for impersonating an officer. 3. Ariane Tahazeda and Haida Sher Ali In an alarming case of impersonating law enforcement at one of the highest possible levels, two men named Ariane Tahazada and Haida Sher Ali allegedly posed as federal agents and even managed to convince some members of the Secret Service that they were legitimate. The pair reportedly began claiming to be Secret Service agents in early 2020, when they lived rent-free in a luxury apartment building in Washington, D.C., after convincing the staff that they worked for the government. It wasn't entirely unbelievable, since many federal agents and government employees do live in the building. But in a shocking twist, Tahazada and Shah Ali also persuaded the building's manager to give them access to surveillance video and residential records. They were finally caught and arrested earlier this year. During a raid, police found a stash of weapons in their apartment. It was also revealed through court documents that the men had used websites that looked like real federal employee portals. Witnesses who watched the pair log on to these sites were admittedly unsure of whether the sites were fake or if the men were using someone else's login credentials. In defense of the real federal agents who failed to catch on to the scheme, it was admittedly very elaborate and convincing. 
For example, right around the time the Secret Service began arming its employees with Glock handguns, Tahazada and Sha'ali suddenly had them too. In other words, it all seemed to add up, and the pair blended in seamlessly with other residents. While the duo managed to live rent-free, it's unclear who funded their visibly lavish lifestyle, which involved showering other residents with expensive gifts and other conspicuous displays of wealth. The investigation is ongoing, and four members of First Lady Jill Biden's security team have been placed on leave as detectives tried to figure out how the suspects pulled the scam off with such accuracy. In an odd turn of events, the judge overseeing the case described the prosecution's allegations as overblown and overstated. He even released Tahazada and Sha'ali while they wait to answer to the accusations against them in future court hearings. 2. Rudy Reed Late last year, police in Victorville, California, noticed a young man responding to traffic incidents in a white Crown Victoria that looked a lot like an unmarked squad car. He used the vehicle to block the road, the same way an officer of the law does while investigating a crash. But the cops knew that the driver didn't work for them and that his car didn't belong to their department, so they pulled the vehicle over to figure out exactly what was going on. The man behind the wheel was 18-year-old Ohio resident Rudy Reed. He was wearing a Toledo police hoodie, and his car was filled with police equipment, including pepper spray, ballistic armor, and LAPD patches. There was also a fake gun in the vehicle. A search of Reed's residence turned up even more gear, including Los Angeles Police Department LAPD uniforms and hats, a California Highway Patrol hat, radio and lighting equipment, police belts, gun holsters, radios, handcuffs, imitation tasers, and more fake guns. Reed was charged with impersonating a police officer and was released the next day with a citation amid an ongoing investigation. Detectives believe that Reed has pretended to be a cop on more than one occasion and that there may be more victims. They urged anyone with information to come forward as the case works its way through the justice system. 1. Shivan Bandi A man whose identity is unknown was so confident in his ability to fool the public at large that he wrote a book last year detailing his alleged experiences as an Indian Army officer with the Srinagar-based China Corps unit. He published a literary work titled Untold Story from the Indian Army under the name Lieutenant Shivan Pandey. Pandey was never in the Indian Army, but he carried on the ruse for months. In addition to publishing a bogus book, he maintained a social media presence, somehow thinking that he wouldn't catch the attention of real military members, or at least they wouldn't call his credibility into question. But they did. In fact, it was Pandey's social media use that drew the attention of the authorities. The sham recently ended after a joint investigation was carried out by military intelligence officers and the Kolkata police, who secretly watched the man for a month and determined that he was lying about who he was. They apprehended the phony soldier, who was wearing army fatigues at the time of his arrest. Investigators haven't yet determined his real name. Police also arrested four people who were allegedly pretending to be the man's bodyguards. A search of Pandey's belongings turned up a fake military ID and stationery featuring an army letterhead. Sources told the press that the suspect acted evasive when detectives tried questioning him, but that they've thus far managed to determine what city he lives in. Pandey was reportedly trying to get a blue authenticity checkmark next to his name on Twitter and Facebook before he was arrested. In an ironic twist, he'd alerted his followers to another alleged imposter who'd gotten caught impersonating a military officer. Thanks for watching. Would you rather get pulled over by a fake cop and be forced to pay a ticket, or pay to go to a concert and have the artist be an impersonator?